So we are now looking at uh, question number two of April 2024. And the question says, part A, highlight six legal effects of the art codes of association of a company. Legal effects of the art codes of association of the company. So uh, we covered about uh, art codes of association and we say it is a document that uh, governs, that governs the association of uh, rather the, 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 the internal affairs in a company. So the legal effects of the art codes of association are broadly classified into three, but you can break them further into, you can discuss uh, the content, these contents. It is the one that gives the appointment of uh, directors, communication with members, powers, liabilities of directors, class meetings, directors meetings, issue of shares, calling and conduct of general meetings, transfer of shares, rights and duties of members, documents, and dividends and company secretary. But if you want to be so specific in terms of the legal implications, there are three ways. One, it constitutes a contract between the company and each member. It constitutes, so I would wish you write this once, it constitutes a contract between the company and each member. And each member in his capacity as member, and each member in his capacity as member is bound to the company by the provisions of the article. Is bound to the company <clears throat> by the provisions of the article. Yeah. Number two. The articles are by reason of case law, a contract between the members themselves. By case law, a contract between the members themselves. And number three, no right given by the articles to a member, no right given by the articles to a member in a capacity other than that of a member, for instance, as solicitors can be enforced against the company. Against the company. So those are the three legal implications. That number one, an article is a contract that binds a company and the members together. So the company is bound to the member and the member is bound to the company. And what that means is that any money that the member has brought to the company, the company owes that member. And on the other side, the company owes the member wealth creation. The company must create wealth. On the other side, now number two, we are saying that the articles is also a contract between members. So members are bound to each other on the basis of the articles. Remember by a general definition, the articles gives how the internal affairs of the company are managed. And then number three, any other right that a member can be given other than being a member, it cannot be enforced against the company. For example, if you are a member and you have been appointed a legal representative of the company, or you have been appointed a company secretary, or any other role you have been given, obviously in accordance with the company's act, you cannot enforce that against the company. You cannot. Or what you can enforce is the rights as a member, first of all. 
So those are the three main points that uh, you can capture. But if you still want to comply with the six, then you can say it is the basis on which uh, we have appointment and dismissal of directors, as I'm here. It guides the communication with members. It shows the powers and responsibilities and abilities of directors. It governs class meetings, directors meetings, issue of shares, calling, conduct, and voting of general meetings, transfer of shares, rights and duties, documents and records, dividends and company secretaries. So those are others that you can add, but all these, all these are coming from these three. So for me, these are the key things that you need to highlight in answering that question. Okay, part B in Asema, identify seven reasons why a company will effect a corporate restructuring. Reasons why a company will effect corporate restructuring. So I want us to look at our notes. Corporate restructuring. Yeah, here we are in our topic number 14. So we say there are three, there are two main reasons, actually just one reason. But we first of all give us two that the scope encompasses enhancing economy, cost reduction, and improving efficiency, productivity, or other profitability. And I told you that all what is done, it is aimed at improving profitability. This is the reason why we want to do corporate uh, restructuring. But having said that, there are other reasons. There are other reasons whose end result is to boost profitability. And here they are, the various needs. So number one, to focus on the core strengths, comma, operational energy and efficient allocation of managerial capabilities and infrastructure. That's number one. Number two, consolidation and economies of scale by expansion. Consolidation and economies of scale by expansion and diversification. And diversification to exploit extended domestic and global markets. To exploit extended domestic and global markets. Number three, revival and rehabilitation. Revival and rehabilitation of a sick unit. Of a sick unit. By adjusting losses of the sick unit. By adjusting losses of the sick unit with the profits of a healthy unit. With the profits of a healthy unit. Number four, acquiring constant supply of raw material. Acquiring constant supply of raw material and access to scientific research and technological developments. Scientific research and technological developments. Number five, capital restructuring by appropriate mix of loan and equity funds, and equity funds to reduce the cost of servicing to reduce the cost of servicing and to improve return on capital employed. 
and to improve return on capital employed. Number six, improve corporate performance. Improve corporate performance to bring it at par, to bring it at par with competitors, to bring it at par with competitors by adopting radical changes by adopting radical changes brought about by information technology. Brought about by information technology. And number seven, to obtain reasonable finances when facing a financial crisis. To obtain reasonable finances when facing a financial crisis. So those are the reasons that we give. And now in your own words, you can see how to summarize. You can see how to summarize, like here we are talking of to obtain reasonable finances, to improve uh, performance by matching the competitors, uh, having a, a conducive or a reasonable capital structure, acquiring raw materials and access to technology, revival and rehabilitation of a sick unit, seeking the economies of scale by expansion, and focusing on core strengths. So in your own way, the way you understand them, you can uh, summarize them and uh, bring them out in a way that someone will understand why we want to do or why companies do corporate restructuring. Uh, part C of the question says, outline the procedure for removal of a company director from office. Outline the removal of a director Move over director. Yeah, so from our notes here, we discussed uh, the removal of directors from office. So the question is asking us the procedure. How do you go about removing the director from the office? How do you go about removing a director from the office? So step number one, a special resolution, or rather a special notice of the resolution is given. A special notice of the resolution is given. That's the first point. Number two, I just want to read them in a summarized way. Number two, the company sends a copy of the notice to the director. The company sends a copy of the notice to the director. Number three, the director makes written representations. The director makes written representations which are circulated to the shareholders. The director makes written representations which are circulated to the shareholders. Step number four, a notice for a general meeting is issued. A notice for a general meeting is issued. Number five, the meeting is convened. The meeting is convened and the resolution passed. 
at the solution passed. So I've tried to summarize, I've tried to summarize, uh, but you can see if now I want to read everything we are saying that number one, a special notice of the resolution is given. This means the shareholder or the shareholders who are intending uh, to propose the resolution must give written notice to the company at least 28 clear days before the meeting at which the resolution will be proposed. So whoever has an issue with the director must give this notice, 28 clear days. Then once the company receives, the company administration receives this notice that director so and so must go. Then the company sends a copy to the director. And when we are happy, there are some people who are saying you need to be out of this office. The director now responds in writing. He makes what we call uh, representations. Now, these representations, it is a way of responding to the issues that have been raised against him, clarifying or providing evidence. And these representations are supposed to be sent to the shareholders, but obviously subject to some safeguards. When we say subject to some safeguards, we mean we cannot circulate if what the director has written is falsehood, what he has written is defaming some people, <clears throat> and so on and so on. So we only circulate when we are comfortable with it. Then uh, after that, the company gives a notice for the general meeting. Uh, obviously, we know how the notice of general meetings are done. And then from there, the meeting is convened. Members come, they discuss. The representations are once again read. The director is given an opportunity to speak. And members debate. If they vote and uh, decide that the allegations are baseless, then the director remains in the office. But if they agree with the notice to remove this director uh, and they vote yes, then the director ceases to hold that office. So that is the procedure of removing a director from the office. That is question number two. Let's go to question number three. 